Alright guys, this is Michael from Twingers, and today is part 2 of the Bug Out series, which get, in which I go over the contents of the bag itself. If you did not see my video of the gear that would be on my person in a Bug Out situation, I will include the link to that down below. Make sure you check that out as well. So, recap. In the event of a Bug Out situation or a disaster in which I would have to leave my home, I would grab the gear mentioned in my previous video, possibly put on cargo pants and put it in those pockets. I would grab my boots, put them on my feet in place of whatever shoes I was wearing. If it was cold, I'd grab a jacket, and then I'd grab this bag while my family was running around getting stuff together, and then we would all get in the car and head out. Now, the only other person in my family with a kit is my brother. And it's not very good. It's like a trash bag, some clothes, and some cordage. It doesn't even have any water or food. So that's where I feel I am in a bit of a different scenario than most of you guys out there. I am in a family of four and the only one with a true bug out bag or survival kit. So I had to have enough resources in here to supply everybody with their basic needs. So that is something that you will see as you watch this video. And I ask you to keep that in mind as we go over some of the various redundancies and extra supplies that I have. So let's start with the outside of the bag first. The elephant in the room is obviously going to be this, which I call my morale keychain, just because I want something a little fun and a little more personal for when we're out there. So that way when we're out there we can play with Pikachu, weightlifting belt, remind us how strong we are, Dare program, except that instead of daring to resisting drugs and violence, we will dare to survive. And Harry Potter, because Harry Potter was our entire childhood. So that's just something a little fun that I've got there, a little bit of personal touch. Let me know what you guys think about that. And here we've got two of these glow stick things. Um, we've got them wrapped around here and clipped on, so if we took them off, then we could hang around our necks if we wanted to or swing them around for signaling purposes. We've got the beeping strobe, and then on, and then off. Red and then orange. And the great thing about these two colors is that they're noticeable, and the red will not ruin your night vision, which is a bonus. Then in these little GameStop PSP pouches, we've got a bunch of granola bars. Cliff bars specifically. So in here we have three. Then we've got three in the other one. And, if, and as you guys will see, even though the best buy date is already printed on there, I decided to write it in Sharpie in the event that the printing got worn out or I just wanted to find it quicker. I keep reminders in my phone as to the best buy and expiration dates of all the food and medicine and water in my bag, so that way I know when to rotate them out. Speaking of water, I've got two bottles right here, and then two bottles on the other side. So you guys may be thinking, why on earth do you have four bottles of water and six cliff bars just on the outside of the bag? Well, once again, that is because I am the only member of a family of four who has a prepared survival kit that includes food and water. So I took it upon myself to include extra food and water, and even shelter and fire making materials as you'll see as we further go on in my kit. And the bag, by the way, is from Adidas. It is one of their extra large sports bags. It's about three years old and it's still together. It used to be my old school bag, but I decided to repurpose this into a bug out bag. And as you can see up here, we've got a bandana just because it was light and I wanted an extra bandana so that way everybody could have a dust mask or just extra water filters. Stuff like that, and so I just tied it on to the outside for easy access. And so this is everything I have on the outside of my bag. Now let's move to the inside. So I'm going to start going pocket by pocket, and I'll start with this pocket right here. This is my easy access pocket. Inside I've got chapstick, which in addition to protecting your lips, is a multi-purpose item. You can use it for small cuts, you can use it uh, to start fires, all sorts of uses for this. Now we got peppermints, because I love peppermints, and when 
you're eating just Cliff Bars and protein shakes and water, you're going to want some flavor, especially with some sugar. That'll give you a little burst of energy. Then we've got my Snoopy pencil sharpener. Focus, 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 focus. There we go. It's upside down. Pencil sharpeners are great because they can get shavings from sticks into Tinder, as well as sharpened pencils that I have in here. And Snoopy will definitely keep you going in a desperate situation. Then we've got my Coleman compass, and I, yes, it does point north. Got in this plastic bag just to keep it waterproof. Then we've got lens wipes, keep your glasses clean, some wet ones to keep yourself clean. Square of tin foil, which can be used for things like cooking hot dogs and potatoes, boiling water, giving yourself a shelter for a uh, dry surface for fire, or using as a hat to keep out the NSA. Hand sanitizer, primary purpose being to sanitize your hands, clean them off when you really don't want to use soap and water, or you just need something quick and easy. And it can also be used for fire starting, which is very convenient there, because it is alcohol based. You guys may not remember these, but these were the old Star Wars light up spoons, came in cereal boxes still works it's red light. i don't know if you guys can see it on camera but that is red light as we discussed before red main light maintains your night vision and it's just something a little fun to carry on me and we've got some disposable gloves you know they can be used to keep your hands a little bit warmer or mostly just to cover up your hands if you're dealing with something exceptionally dirty Coleman first aid kit that I've got wrapped in duct tape to keep it watertight. I threw in a few more band-aids into here. Um, fun sticker. And then the rubber band is meant to keep everything together, and it is a dare rubber dare base dare bracelet. Something a little motivational, and since it's wrapped in red, it's more easily identifiable as first aid kit. And some hot hands. Because right now it's October where I'm at, and it's starting to get cold. That is everything that I've got in here, and we're going to be moving on in just one second. So here's everything I keep in my top easy access pouch. Now we'll be moving on to the main outside pouch. So this is my front pouch, which I call my big easy access pouch. Let's open it up and see what we've got inside. So, I've got my fire kit. I'll go into that in a second. For a minute, actually. In here, I've got first aid kit. It's where I just got gauze, bandages, alcohol prep pads, uh, ace wrap, gauze pads. Uh, this is mostly gauze pads, not a whole lot of band aids because of the small Coleman kit up here. So, this is more for bigger boo boos. There's no trauma in here, but I do have a separate trauma kit that I keep in my backpack at school, which I would grab before I left the house. I'll probably end up going over that in another video. And we've got duct tape, because duct tape can solve just about any problem that you've got. All-purpose poncho, because you need to keep yourself dry and warm when it gets wet. And it rains a lot where I'm from. Glasses case, because I wear glasses, so I will need something to put them in. Another compass, because I like being redundant and having backup. And again, I have this one in baggy to keep it waterproof. These are some family photos, I'm not going to show them to you, but I just find that there's something to, one, prove that my parents are my parents, two, little keepsake. Zip ties. Zip ties are awesome. Another poncho, this one's from Coleman. Coleman emergency blanket. It's one of those cheap $1 foil ones, so it's not very strong, but it will do its job in an emergency, and it will also serve as a liner to put inside of a tarp that I have in here. Tent stakes wrapped in tin foil, just because it's another excuse to have extra tin foil, takes up no space. Um, this tin foil will not be used for cooking or water purification, this will specifically be used for fire making. Um, tent stakes, because... 
I have tarp in here as well as trash bags that I can use to make a shelter. Here I've got a little monocle or whatever it's called. Monocular, that's what it's called. Helps see far away. Small little flashlight just to have another light. It's not very strong, but there we go. It's something. Whistle. This is another dare whistle because I love the dare program back in my elementary school and whistles are great for signaling. Ballpoint pen. Sharpie. Couple of crowns. Yes, they are blues, blues crowns just because they're what I had in house. And the great thing about crowns is that in addition to being a writing instrument, you can also use these as candles to keep them going for like 30 minutes. And a little eraser. Just one I had a pencil in here somewhere. Well, if I do not have a pencil, then I will definitely be putting a pencil in because it's pretty stupid to have an eraser with no pencil. And here, Blue's Clues Thinking Share Notebook that is stuck right now. Give me a second. Got it unstuck. So this is just to take notes. No, it is not right over rain. No, it is not waterproof. But it's better than nothing. Hi. It's better than nothing. Small, compact fit in there. And it's another motivational thing that I was talking about. Then in here... This is where I keep some food items. So in here I've got a bunch of sugar, salt, tea and coffee packets, a few napkins and straws from coffee packets, tea packets, Gatorade packets, stuff that will give you some caffeine when you need it, rehydrate you when you need it, make bad tasting water taste a lot better. These are easy to find, just pick them up wherever there's coffee. Here I've got plastic utensils, napkins, chopsticks, some straws, because you need something to be able to eat with and drink with. More tin foil for aforementioned purposes such as boiling and fire, keeping the NSA out of your head. A bunch of plastic baggies wrapped up in a plastic bag. These plastic baggies are amazing. Another big plastic baggie for when you need to put something really big in your bag. Plastic baggies, which can also be used as chest seals in the event that you get shot. Which very well might happen in a bite scenario. Here's something else. Oh, it's another crown. Awesome. It's another writing utensil and another emergency candle. And that's it in this pouch.